giant ceiling. So like it defeats the point of having the big one and the small one because it's the like mixed one. And as much as okay. I love FD, we don't really need a third one. Um, I don't want to. I don't want Mennonite to be that good. Or really, beam. I don't want Beam to be that good. But like Mennonite would be. Mennonite would be the bigger problem for Bomb that I would actually still play, because that matchup goes from like winning to losing on flat stages, whereas Beam is losing anyway. So I don't really care. <laughs> That's the next level. Next level mind games. It doesn't matter that this matchup's worse because I'm not going to play it anyway. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All right, so we are on gardens here. Justin has not been hit yet, but he doesn't have a huge lead. So Justin playing very patient. Oh, and a late parasol there from B. Justin's able to get their geyser or shine out to punish it. Justin's so good at punishing rolls. Yeah. That and like water moves just last forever. Yeah, like water is one of the best characters for it. I would say water along with Yo-Yo, probably the best character in the game at punishing rolls. And then Gooey is like a character you kind of have to do that to because a lot of their other defensive options are like not that punishable. Ooh, really good dash to, for the tick throw there. You'll see Justin do that a lot when he's at close range is that um, water dash confirms into grab if you shield grab fast enough out of it. Um, so what Justin will do is they'll quickly dash and then shield and immediately grab. And it makes your your grab functionally frame five instead of frame eight, which you know can make the difference in that those scramble moments. And that's going to be game one. Justin taking it. B keeping it somewhat close, but B, but for a bit. But Justin just had such a solid start to the game that it was really hard for B to bring it back. All right, Justin going Archer. That probably means a Jam Bastion pick here. And it will. Probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Justin was talking about how... Or no, he, he says this a lot, actually. <laughs> Just, like, his characters, like you can't take them to opposite like you can't take them to their worst like both of their worst stages cause yeah because they'll just switch like, yeah if you take archer if it's a where he's playing archer you just go factory and then all of a sudden water's running at you and if it's if it's a water set then all of a sudden here's their archer coming out it's like oh okay well now we're doing this <laughs> also justin one of the many archers among the top level players but Definitely has become one of the better ones over time. Really grinded the archer to get it, you know, not to the level of his water, but still a very, very solid archer. And certainly a good pick when someone takes you to Jam Bastion, like this. Also what he uses for yeah. every Break the Stage tournament, um, which of course Archer is broken in all of those, but like everyone else is playing Archer too, and Justin's still winning all of them. <laughs> Correct. Wait. That all being said, he's that... doing very well right now. Why did that Hitman hit? Uh, I don't know. Because Gooey was rapid jabbing. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Huh. So when B really commits to these lasers, her placement of them is quite good. Um, Absolutely. She is not the Poyo style of Gooey overall, but she's honestly not bad at it when she does it anyway. And yeah. someone like Archer, kind of hard to approach. And the thing is that if you go ahead and let Archer start hitting you and start shield pressuring you from above, it's very difficult for Gooey to do anything about it and get back into it. But if you're already up there and you're the one zoning, even if Archer is okay at staying away and occasionally getting a shot or two off, it's a lot harder for Archer to really get back up into the sky and air camp you when there's sort of this line that they can't cross without eating some lasers. So I'm not going to say like gooey lasering uh, downwards is hard to do, but it's not particularly easy either. It is not easy to do that consistently. That's a really important thing to note. Like, you know, 
This game is not a game with a, a large amount of tech skill, but what it is is a game with a large amount of precision, and there's a big difference. Yeah. And what I mean by that is tech skill is something you see like in the the more advanced water combos or the more advanced like MK Ninja Parasol that kind of thing. Like those are tech skill things you have to grind to make sure your execution is good enough. Precision is more so just like you have to you have to have like every input has to be exactly in the right spot, or else you're gonna get punished for it. Oh yeah. And, and, and GUI is a thing character about, with like, a lot GUI. of that on in their defensive game especially. Yeah, the, the GUI laser is like, you go out of float state if you hit down first, so you have to like master the timing of uh, yeah. hitting B and then down without hitting a, like, a straightforward laser. Exactly. And I think one of the most important things to point out, with the, especially with the Archer matchup, is that um, one of the biggest things about that matchup, what I, was, what I was talking about is like if Archer is the one who gets set up first, starts camping first, and starts pressuring you from the sky, from the platforms, and if B ever makes like one or two quick little mistakes with those lasers, all of a sudden they lose that pressure that they had, and Archer is the oh, one that DP was got, so good. Oh, good unrock timing as well. But yeah, B's going to be looking very strong so far in this set, and now taking a lead over Justin's water here in game three. All that grab was fantastic. Space the rock. Oh, huge combo from Justin here. Got one or two DI reads there, and all of a sudden takes it from a huge deficit to a huge lead. B going for the dash grab reset, but doesn't get the dash input in time. Oh, and really great laser placement to cover that air dodge, but. Oh, the Unrock doesn't get punished hard enough. B still alive, but down by quite a bit here. Laser placement even more important in this matchup because, you know, the risk of against Archer is you might let them start setting up. But the risk against Water is that you just die on contact. So, <laughs> really good grab there as well. B not done yet. It's bringing this back a little bit still. Oh, fires the laser at the dash hitbox, and that's going to do it. And that's the kind Justin of... Justin times a roll perfectly there. Yeah, that's the kind of precision that I'm talking about, is B misses that last laser shot before Justin rolled through the jab, and what happened was that B shot it downwards, not into the ground, but into the water dash hitbox. You have to aim a little bit higher when water is running at you, or else water will dash through it. If B spaces that laser just the slightest bit higher, um, she probably gets another laser hit there, and doesn't necessarily take the game, but is in a position where she's only down about 20 health. And since you let Justin get back in, and a really well-timed roll, as you mentioned, get through that first jab hit and catch B's GUI from behind and make it 2-1. So we are going back to Factory Tour, though, and B thinks she can do it on this stage. Which I think so, oh, too. Yeah, that, was, that was very close. That was pretty close. Yeah. Especially after she took 150 damage or so from uh, one combo. <laughs> If she can simply not do that, you know, either not get hit by that one combo starter, or more realistically, DI better when she does, uh, definitely realistic for her to take a game here. That being said, Justin, definitely very good at making adjustments mid-set to things like B's laser spacing, because um, B was getting a lot off of, like, timing reads with these lasers, catching air dodges with, like, shooting one laser and then, like, a delay before the next one, or, like, aiming at a different angle to catch something the next one. Smart rock after that roll, that air dodge there. Ooh, Justin doesn't roll far enough. Oh, be a little Almost bit early on the explosion, the... though. She had the read correctly, just mistimes the explosion. Last game, she had a command grab, but just waited just a little too... Uh, little. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it was too little. A little longer. Yeah. <sighs> Read the roll, oh, but didn't quite oh, space it right. Grabs are so, so bad in this game. <laughs> I just, I just wish they were a little bit better. Not even too much. Just, you know, she, could hit people. She could have uh, charged a GUI command grab and turned that around. That would have been cool. <laughs> Justin sneaks over, also turns her around against the grab mix-up as well. So Justin takes that one quite a bit more, um, more convincingly. But after how close the first three games of this set were, 
would certainly expect uh, expect this to remain a closed set. Yeah, I, I hope B isn't feeling like like she's losing it here because she definitely had. Yeah, no, she is often she her own worst these. enemy. I think if she can stay calm, there is definitely a shot that she gets back into this one. For sure. Alright, so back to Jam Bastion. I don't think Justin is staying. It's gonna go back to the Archer though. I didn't see the pick. Was it still water? I thought it was water. Okay. Ooh, also Croc just barely avoids getting upset in top eight. 5 4 over Toby V. Oh, wow. Toby making that set Toby super must have come close. Back at least but a little bit. Croc clutches it out game nine. Because Croc was like up three games when I was. Oh, watching. wow. Yeah, Toby <gasps> almost bringing it all the way back then. <laughs> I'm getting Sutter stepped for here. some of the tech. All right, so going into game five, Justin with a three-one lead. We're back on Jim Bastion, which I definitely think is a really good GUI stage in this matchup. Um, the risk of picking it against Justin is the Archer, but I think B was happy to fight the Archer if Justin wanted to play it, given that she beat it last time. I, Justin might go for some of the waterfall tech here. Just seeing how well he executed it against you uh, as a streamer. Yeah, the thing is, you have to change your, or at least the way they do it is uh, changing the grip on the controller. Like, Justin will put their hand on, like, like claw grip with the left hand to do that stuff. And I don't know how viable it is to play neutral like that. Unless he's been practicing more, which maybe, who knows. Ooh, really good command grab there. Not even a jab mix up into it, just goes for it. Yeah. Shielding is very Ooh, powerful against Gui, so having that command grab to just like call people out is very important. Really great one hit of hover there from Justin. Now Justin back in control, but this is still a close game. Oh, good lasers again. Catching Justin just at the right height that he wants to be at. I like that adaptation from Justin, though. They're going for those single-hit jump 2Bs to sneak over Rapid Jab without giving B time to react and DP it if she cancels it in time. Hmm. Yeah, no, this is, this is right. some really, really good GUI gameplay right here. Good guys are there. Reads the rollback, but a good, good power show from Justin. Not over quite yet. Oh, and a good geyser to read B going out of the corner. Yep. That was very, very good. B kind of made they tell tried to make a telegraph escape there. Wow, really close game five again, but Justin is able to take that one going to set point here. Yo, someone just mentioned this in chat. Um, it is entirely possible that Celica Demo eliminates Croc today. <laughs> I do I do need to see them play streamed, like, though. This that's is, that's this the is important a possibility. Because Celica's fighting Zet, and Croc plays the loser of this. Um, and the winners of those play in loser semis. Yeah. I, I, do, I wish I knew what happened today. I really <laughs> want to know how Celica I won. I still don't know who Celica played. Because they I'm answered me when him. I asked Attorney General, but very cryptically, so... Yeah, if you want to ask more directly, that would probably be good. Oh, a panic roll from B after a really good roll before to get out of pressure. Rolls one too many times. I like the quick rock and unrock there, though. B has spent this entire game getting pressured, though, and she's just looking for a way to escape it. Oh, she was out of that geyser, but floated back into it. Is the late unrock going to get punished again, even after it hits? <laughs> that that move so is good. Massive. It goes so high. I can't wait to have that move in Community Edition. 
Parasol is going to be top tier. It's going to be so much fun. We're barely changing anything else. <laughs> Just some like quality of life combo fixes and then that. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, is it like almost done? No, but, like our patch notes as far as what we're going to do are almost done. I don't know how long it's going to take for Ruby to do it. Ah. All right, good job I'd be getting out of that platform there. She's still behind here, but this is definitely still doable. And yep, command grab there. Kind of saw that one coming eventually, but it was hard to tell when it would be. Oh, catches the roll. One more full jab will do it for B. That dash attack would have taken it too, but the dash attack may be a little bit too aggressive. Good float around that. Two more lasers now. Is it four in guts? It's six in guts. Oh. Oh. Just trying to get a water ball over that. And the jab one will take it. B gets put another one on the board here. So yeah, I was four thinking B was to trying two. to go for a command grab there. I was thinking that too, but I think Justin was as well. And so I like B's idea there just stop jabbing and then start again. So Zed and Celica just started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be on um, Magikarp's stream. Yeah, if anybody wants to watch that, definitely pull up the stream. If you are not already on multi-twitch, I highly recommend multi-twitch. It's a good thing. Oh, watch both sure. of our streams at once. Or just have them up in two different windows. I mean, you can do that too. But definitely two sets going on here that are both going to be very exciting. Also, Shmidor in the chat confirming that Zelika played Dedede in that set against Croc. Croc. Look, Salika's DDD is... it's... oh man. <laughs> it's so good. That's a, that's a matchup Croc knows like the back of his hand. And he also hates how badly <laughs> DDD loses to Wrestler. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is correct. Alright, so Justin's still looking for that one more game here. B choosing to leave gardens open maybe banning factory uh, maybe Justin avoiding factory not sure incredibly brave from B right there instead of reading the roll reads that Justin is not going to dash after it and just walks right up and grabs after a while oh just a little late I think missed a dash input Ooh, good quick explosion, but the jab one will go under the water dash attack. How did jab... How did dash beat out unrock? Huh. Mate? Huh. Interesting know. scenario there, but works out for Justin. Ooh, not rolling far enough, but B didn't believe in jab, didn't keep it going. Huge combo for Justin. 100 health lead now. Not over His yet, would be in a lot of crazy. trouble. Oh, and she's panicking so hard after Unrock every time. And it is difficult against Water, because Water has the frame data to just run at you, quite literally, and get the hitbox out right away. But it's so hard to avoid rolling right away, and Justin's been punishing it every time. Oh yeah, I, I want to see B go for just Unrock shield. Yeah, like, getting shield pressure isn't great, but she's getting hit every time, and that's, you know, significantly worse. And Justin will be able to throw a water ball over that from the platform. Oh, good quick rock out of shield. But one more hit from Justin will do it, and the roll will not yeah. quite work out there. So Justin will take this one 5-2. to 